Uh, madam good evening uh, am i audible yes sir i'm audible yes sir oh thank you Good evening, sir. On behalf of yeah. our president, Dr. Suhoshri Sharkar Jamshedpur Saudia School Complex, I welcome you all. Our resource person is Suroji Sen, sir. And now, uh, sir, you can start the session. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Good evening to madam. Good evening to our chairperson of Saudia School Complex, Dr. Suhoshri Sarkar, our mentor, our guide, our teacher, in whichever way we take her, she is for us in each and every way. Good evening to all the learned and respected teachers present in this platform today. And I think today this is, if I am not making a mistake, this is the sixth or maybe the seventh uh, in-house online training program being conducted by me. And I will always thank Madam Subhashri Sarkar for giving me the opportunity. And of course, to all the teachers who have been listening to me patiently for so many months. I mean, the number of uh, programs that we had in the previous months. Okay. So today we have a very interesting topic and we'll have a lot of discussion on it. So without wasting any time, let's go right into the topic. So here we go. We 
today our topic is post pandemic child centric teaching and all of, uh, madam has just introduced me i think all of you know me surujit sen principal jharkhand public school baliapur dhanbad uh, respected teachers before i start the program or before i start let me make one thing very clear to you i am not here to tell you about the process of teaching or the strategies of teaching after the children have returned back to school after the pandemic but i will tell you exactly what we are facing and what we should do to make sure that teaching learning process remains calm quiet beautiful perfect to the point effective efficient huh? that's what we are actually looking for to be very honest with you all to be very honest with you all and i think all of you will all agree also with me that when the when the children started coming to school we we, we were having a different feeling we are having a different feeling we thought uh, uh, things in a different way but when they came and when they reached school and when he started taking classes we noticed that whatever we had in our mind about the children pre pandemic we did not get them lot of changes have taken place within these two years of the pandemic you can say that there is a trajectory over the entire process a paradigm shift has taken place in the children's behavior their attitude so it is high time now to analyze what exactly is happening there and it is also very important to know what we should do so in order this is uh, in order to make this uh, presentation i had taken help from a few sources as i am not a expert but i felt that this presentation this module should be dealt with each one of you so that in the coming days we can utilize all the information that we have today and make teaching learning process more enjoyable right now it is still not that much enjoyable as it used to be before the pandemic that's of sure okay let's go forward Okay, let's have an overview of what exactly happened. Now, research suggests research suggests that many children and young people can find the transition between schools unsettling and unstressful. This is one thing. Research has suggested that many children and young people young people means I know uh, you can take it as college going students also all our our students. can find transition between schools unsettling and stressful life after covid-19 uh, just a minute uh, we have to first see this then we will see that okay now this presentation has been designed in order to offer you some support around thinking about the needs of the children okay so this presentation is to give you some support about the thing about thinking about the needs of the children and young people in your school and how they will need to be supported in transition back into school or their new classes this is the primary concern so the presentation is designed in offer in order to offer you some support about around thinking about the needs of the children the young people in your school and how they will need to be supported in transition back and coming back to school or into their new classes some different models of thinking will be shared to help you thinking and for you as a school to decide on the approach that best suits your school you your people and the parents so we will be discussing about a few models and you will utilize that one which you think suits best for your school for your students for your children for your parents and again i am confessing this presentation is only designed to aid this thinking if any further information or support is required you can apply them and you can get them okay but this is just a simple one next
Now we will see life after COVID-19. What is it? Now, life after COVID-19, research suggests that many children and young people can find the transition between schools unsettling and stressful. This is a very vital point. Okay. As soon as the children came to school, we, we noticed they could not read, they could not write, they were not settling down properly, they were not mixing with others, they uh, used to just um, take themselves inside a shell or something, they used to withdraw themselves from various uh, events in the school that we were conducting. So all these were actually, all these were actually signs of unsettling and stressfulness. Following the current public health crisis, following the current public health crisis, that COVID-19, which is of course COVID-19, it is likely that many children and young people will experience similar feelings when they return to school once the social isolation ends. That was decided, that was thought. Especially those who are vulnerable and have special educational needs or are moving to a new school, unusual programs of transition may not have taken place. Okay, so what is there? Now, some of the children will experience these feelings if they are kept in isolation. Okay, or those who have special educational needs, uh, children with special needs, the specially able children, they had a lot of crisis. And those who are moving to a new school, it may be that, you know, that uh, people started migrating after the pandemic and within the pandemic time, many, many, many families, many people started migrating from one part of the country to another part. And at that time, what happens? Children were also, some children were studying in one part of the country. They traveled to their home place and they came to their own place and they started settled down over there. And in those schools, they started going. In your school also, you have seen many new children have come. In my school also, I have seen many new children have come. So this is also, this is also something that will keep them unsettled. Usual program of transition may not have taken place, leaving both children, parents and staff anxious. Yes, that's true. And that's what we are facing right now. Many children who have come new, who have joined new, they are still yet to settle down. Many children may have also experienced loss, bereavement, yes, may have experienced loss. Maybe some of the children have lost their parents, their grandparents, their near and dear ones. Hardships and safeguarding difficulties. However, there will also be many children who will have had a positive experience being at home and, and look forward to get getting back to normal. Now see, two type of two, you know, See, there's always two, uh, two, two sides of the coin we say, no. So we will see the good side, we'll, see, we'll get the bad side also, or not so good, I will say. I will not say bad, it's not so good. See, one side we will have many children who are coming back to school, who may have experienced huge loss. Some of them may have lost their parents, their grandparents. They have hardships. They may not have got the right quality of food at that time. They may not have, they have to travel. They have to travel under stressful conditions from one part of the country to another part of the country. So these will play a very vital role in shaping them back. But at the same time, we will also have children who were at home, who were under the guidance of their parents and they can get back to normality. You know? better way compared to the other ones. So all these are actually life after pandemic. The purpose of this presentation is therefore to provide advice on how schools can support their children and young people in managing this transition. This is our main idea. The children who are transitioning to a new school and returning back to school, what is their let us see what is happening to them. The behaviors that we may expect from them. Just a minute. Just a minute. Huh. The children who are transitioning to a... Just a minute. Just give me one minute. There is an issue with the system. I will just take one minute to rectify it. Okay. Just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. There's a issue with the system. Just one minute I will take.
Yeah. Uh, uh, is it uh, uh, is the presentation visible right now, madam? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, right. So, children who are transitioning in to a new school and returning back to school, what is there? Now, there's an organization called Source Fair EPS. They have developed a document to provide some advice on how to support children who will be transitioning to a new school and those returning back to school. Okay, so they have developed a particular document. What is this document? Let us see. It is important to remember that although many children will be returning to their school, this will be following a long period of absence and will leave and will need support. So they are saying that organization which is taking, which is giving us this advice or information, the specialists, okay, they are telling us that it is very important to remember that many children will be returning to their school this will be following a long period of absence that we all know and they need our support. Okay, fine. What else we have? The following psychological models can be applied to new starters, but it will be beneficial for schools to think about how the new term will start for them in terms of what? That behaviors with that we may expect. Okay, some children will be disengaged with any type of learning and bring back in school due to a long period of absence. Yes, this we are noticing, respected teachers. I think each one of you is facing this problem. They are disengaged in any type of learning. As soon as they came back, first thing that we noticed is that many of the children, many of the children, even the, even the children of the higher classes were unable to read properly, have lost the art of writing. They have lost the art of writing. They were very slow in writing. Their handwritings have depreciated. There was a deficiency in, in their vocabulary. So all these things because of a long period of absence from school. And a particular school of thought believes, a particular school of thought believes that if, that if children are taken away from studies for more than seven days, there will be a drastic fall in their learning qualities. This has been proved time and again. So children will be disengaged. Then what else we will notice? Some children may feel particularly frustrated about being home, away from their friends, adults who support them and missing key experiences. Exams, proms. Yes, excuse me. Yes, hello. Some children may feel particularly frustrated about being at yes. No, immediately after the, after say, after two or three months after the pandemic, we were getting this type of calls from the parents. Sir, kab school kholega? Sir, bache ko samal nahi pa rahe? Sir, bache kha khana nahi kha rahe? Madam, ye nahi ho ra. Madam, bache sota nahi hai. All these are actually signs of frustration of the children when they were in the house for a long period of time. They were away from their friends, their adults who supported them. They missed the key experiences like examinations, school, trips, friends. So these things we are expecting their behavioral changes. Some For some children and young people, their behavior becomes more challenging that adults find difficult to understand and manage due to flight or fight responses, uncertainty and changes of the routine. Suddenly there was a change in the routine. Suddenly, flight means running away from certain things. And that leads to fight within the mind. Tremendous behavioral changes took place. And we got this information from the parents time to time during the pandemic. That's why we were trying to have, that's why we are, we were trying to conduct that's why we are trying to conduct those in-house trainings, uh, in-house, sorry, not in-house, in uh, sorry, online classes for the children so that at least they should be in touch with the school some way or other. Anxiety, returning to school may result in some children being anxious over leaving parents, home and safety that, that this offered. Some may be anxious over getting ill themselves. Now, this is a point to be discussed. See, after returning to school, for two years, the children were in their house. No school, no studies, nothing. The study that was done through online was okay. What type of study? We all know. Now, when they are coming back to the school, remember children are of 
very small age they are most of them when they are coming back to the school they will be leaving their parents they will be anxious will i i will go to school if i if i again get covid over there if i fall sick if i if something happens to me what will happen so these types of anxieties will dwell among the students until now they are dwelling for some children they may have experienced loss and that we have already discussed which result in them crying shouting anger etc yes yes very much in my school i have seen two children whose parents passed away and sometimes they behave in such a way respected teachers you will not believe me it becomes very difficult to control them time to time you have to call their guardians because that 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 loss those small children cannot take it and when they come back to school and when they see other parents coming no that 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 hits them out in a different way it's a tremendous feeling it's a tremendous anxiety feeling which cannot be expressed in words and it happens almost many schools have experienced this and this anger in relation to a range of feelings different types of feelings occur so these behavioral changes we will see some children may not even may, may not experience any of the above and return to school with no difficulty okay but most of the children, many children have, uh, have got these problems but a handful of them may not have any of these experiences okay you know some children they understand things much better much quicker what we call them okay their brain has developed uh, in a different way but then only a handful of them are there otherwise most of the children showed these types of problems to us now speaking to parents care about how their child has been over isolation will give information so that's why time to time we were also time to time we were also talking to the parents we are having a counseling sessions with the parents and the guardians eh, to know how that uh, uh, how their children has been over the isolation period what they used to do uh, what they liked what they disliked uh, what was their mental we were trying to get information from them many schools are doing this and till now we are also doing it especially we are conducting all those parent teachers meeting and to find out because children are still not that normal as they used to be before the pandemic so what are the things that we are noticing in a in a nutshell now we are the thing that we are noticing see behind see anger is there among the children and behind this anger what are the things huh? what are those qualities that are having there is tremendous fear fear tarawa geez. frustration confusion what will happen to me if i fall sick if i don't pass mother will also get angry but if i fall sick then my body will not respond properly even some children were telling if i die what will happen so see if you if you see all these things huh, there will be loneliness feeling of loneliness which will lead to rejection depression embarrassment humiliation overwhelming stress too much of stress will be there with the children also helplessness jealousy will develop outrage and in, uh, to injustice on small small matters they will start they start shouting if they find any injustice is taking place among them <coughs> sometimes they feel guilty about it they feel ashamed about it they hurt themselves they become sad they keep themselves in isolation these are some of the problems that we are seeing in our schools if you are studying them if you are looking into your children if you are taking care of your children deeply you will find these things are happening yes somewhere or other and the only people who can help them to solve all this is we teachers no nobody else can do it parents and teachers teachers and parents so this any if you if you want to take a screenshot of this you can take it Okay, this is a very beautiful pie chart where we got a lot of information about what exactly is happening in our classrooms and the anger that, that we are seeing the children are having, possessing with them is all due to this. Okay, let's see the next one. The approach is what we should do. So it again offers, uh, uh, so this presentation also offers an overall several psychological theories that can be applied within schools to support the needs of the children. So when this type of a situation is taking place and it is taking place because of which the learning process is not so perfect. So what are those psychological theories which psychologists have developed 
and let us see what is this. Yes, Avijit Das, sir. Good evening, sir. First, building positive relation. As soon as the children will come to the school or as soon as they started coming, what we have done? We have started building a positive relations. We forget about, we forget about studies, we forget about what happened, we forget about, we just started hugging each other, shaking hands with each other, putting our, patting each other, patting the children, say, okay, dear, how are you? How is everything? Okay, now we are back to school again. We all will be happy. Uh, we all will play. We all will sing. We all will dance. We all will study together. These types of positive relationships we started developing. Many children even forgot who is the principal of the school. Yes. One child told me, Uncle, how are you? Who are you? I said, why? You don't know who I am. You didn't see me two years before. Oh, yes, you are principal, sir. You know, it, it, it's so lovely to see or to hear all these things also. Beautifully, the child claims, uncle, who are you? Uh, so, you know, so children have forgotten all those things. So we need to develop a positive relationship with them first. Next is what? Pace model. I'll talk about this pace model. It's a fantastic model. I'll talk a little later about it. Okay. Pace model. Mindfulness. We have to put their mind together. We have to bring them close to our heart. And we have to enjoy what they are saying. Instead of cursing or shouting or howling for their non-performance. We have to go for resilience. Make them understand they will bounce back. Whatever they have lost from there, they will bounce back and come to the normal position. So that creation of resilience has to be developed by the teachers in order to make them learn. Just one minute. Training, training, yes, yes. Later we'll talk about it. Okay. Sorry for disturbance. That was my wife from her school. She's having a program. Sorry for this. Okay. Attachment. See, when building positive relationship comes, attachment comes. Let us attach ourselves. Let us not keep any distance from the children. We often say that we should maintain a distance from the children. But at this particular situation, right now, the phase that we are all passing, this in, that unusual transitional phase where we need to attach with our children. We have to hug them. We have to hold them. We have to make them feel you are at home under caring hands. That's what we need. And nurturing the school approaches. Whatever we will nurture them. Whatever approaches you have, each and every school have some special approaches towards the children. You nurture those qualities in the best possible way. Psychosocial care. Psychologic, psychologically Psycho and social, society and psychology both join together, we get psychosocial care. So that whatever depressions, whatever anxieties there are, in a very socially active, socially acceptable way, we have to treat them. Then only their learning process will happen in the school. Motion coaching, softly, slowly, casualing the children, then only we can coach them. Growth mindset. Once this happens, then the window, slowly, slowly the mindset will go towards the positive side. Growth mindset means making the mind, huh? thinking, letting the children's thinking go towards the positive. Otherwise, most of the children were thinking, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. If I fall sick, my mother is not here, my father is not here, how the school will take care. So all these things will slowly be removed if we apply all these psychological theories. Mindset will grow. Growth mindset and so relationship, let us first see what is this. Upon returning to school, a key area to think about will be development and re-establishment of relationships. In the beginning, I told you, please, 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 for God's sake, develop a very good relationship. This will not only be for people, but with staff and each other. Yes, even we teachers, principals, we also need to develop a good relationship after our back, after our returning back to school. Because the children will see 
this also na suppose if only if we only develop the good relationship with the children but we are not having good relationship with our own staff members then principal children will think okay the adults are uh, behaving in this way we must also so how the positive relationship will develop so relationship development should be both with the children as well as for the staff member this is very very important okay of course in all schools we have a very good relationship with each other of course but there should be some sort of the maintenance of distance also it is suggested that schools focus on relationships first how to support staff and pupils to connect when they have been separated as well as children and young people re establishing friendships so it is suggested that schools we should first focus on the relationships with our support staff with our teachers with our other other stakeholders and then we should connect with the pupils because they have been separated for a long time so the young children they should again re establish their friendships and all this is how relationship will develop one of the a very very touchy issue in life is the relationship younger children may need additional adult support in reminding them of how to play and interact appropriately with others yes some of the children may have forgotten how to play how to mix how to become friends so here the adults will come in their support and who are the adults in the school obviously we teachers very tender touch is needed very tender touch is needed at this particular point staff also need time to reconnect with each other where they feel safe fit and ready to so that they can model their behaviors towards children just now i told you that we should reconnect with each other we should have a very good relationship with each other we should not uh, so too much of ego mess with each other within each other and that will also help the children to develop their behaviors to make them more positive towards life the development of relationships will then lead to feelings of belonging yes one will understand that i belong to this place i am important i am valuable i have to do something and be in safe as well and at the same time when the feeling of belonging will go there when the feeling of oneness will be there there will be a feeling of being safe now i am safe nothing will happen i will not fall sick the virus will not attack me my other relations will not pass away as well as the opportunity to do a fm structures and so this will have once the child gets into this feeling once the child of the belonging of being safe then again restructuring again making things go in the right way will take place routine of life will slowly slowly come back the good routine of life i will say the best practices will come back and that's what we are actually looking for then teaching learning will become so these are the things that we need remember in the beginning i told you it's not about how to teach but how to mix with the children and create and create a good environment for the children attachment next part is attachment what is this let us see as a result of covid-19 pandemic some children have may have experienced trauma further trauma na? the impact of trauma often depends upon the severity and timing yes many children you know they have experienced trauma maybe they have lost someone maybe they have uh, their parents have lost and that 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 the impact the force on which the trauma has attacked them depends upon their severity how severe it was and at what particular time it was yes suppose if the parents if a child, if a child is only say 10 years of age and due to some reason or other due to this covid they are both the parents have passed away just imagine what type of a trauma the child will pass through or maybe their grandparents because after parents the children are very uh, close to their grandparents the brothers or sisters all the close relationship so that depends upon and at what time at the age of 10 if a child loses his parents the trauma is unimaginable the pain will we can only understand the pain of the pain if we get that pain children whose caregivers respond sensitively and appropriately to the child's need at times of distress and fear are apt to develop secure att attachments yes so those children whose caregivers who are the children's caregivers their parents and the teachers if they respond sensitively and appropriately to the child's needs at the time of distress and fear Have to develop secure attachments. 
they will have a secure attachment to their caregivers and we are the caregivers for the children right now once we are showing them the positive sign once we are very sensitively we are taking care of them they will understand us they are the thoughts to have better outcomes than non sequel attached children yes so those who are not that much attached now they will also get attached and they will feel much more free we know that transition can prove to be difficult yes this is a very very difficult phase very very difficult phase even when children have secure and stable background they have a secure background they have a stable background parents are rich money is there everything is there but still you know something that 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 the trauma which has happened due, due to this long absence because of this long isolation from human beings is having a very strong hold in the children's background reinforcing the need to use attachment in from principles universally for all students yes so the, it and it is same for all the children across the world additionally and uncertainly of the coronavirus and the impact this had such as routines being disrupted yes family routines been disrupted family members are ill anxiety among children upon returning to school the fear of getting sick so all these things are so attachment is very this is a very difficult phase for the children and here we need to be attached with each other it is important that relationship with staff are re established for all children the school setting as well as the adults that care for children and young people need to be safe and secure in order in order for them to be emotionally able to ready to learn so if you if we want them to learn if we want them to come back to their original position then we have to follow all these types of points at least a few to attach ourselves with them attachment is very important now you can see this one uh, this is a web okay this is like a web like structure talking about attachments and all this diagram demonstrates the importance of school being a safe base and how this can be achieved so what we need to do yes dikti ma'am that's true children need experiences of being and feeling calm believe that they are lovable and are loved they should get this feeling that others want to connect and interact with them they should get that feeling that they are lovable they can be loved they will be loved they will be connected to each other and interact with them that others are interested in them and their thoughts so others means the teachers the friends and all that they can be curious and make mistake that they are safe and that they can trust others to meet their needs so this feeling of trust the feeling of belief the feeling of one oneness togetherness these needs to be developed and this is what we have in this form of a web availability helping the children to trust sensibly helping the children to manage the feelings and behaviors we have to be very very sensitive i told told you in the beginning it's a very very touchy issue that we are discussing today acceptance building the child self self esteem if we accept the child is an okay son okay dear okay beta okay baby no issue at all you make mistake i am there there for you whatever you do i will take it that will create that self esteem no i am not at the loss everything is not lost okay cooperation helping the children to feel effective if you want you can take a screenshot of this also and this we can only do so family members sit helping the children where they belong to so you each one is interconnected you know each one is interconnected family members are also should be there teachers should also be there feeling of togetherness should be also there acceptance should also be there cooperation should be also there all these needs to be done many staff will have heard of huh, or many i think many of you have heard about Marjory Boxwell intervention nature group nature group how many of the key principles can be implemented within the classroom okay so there are, there are six main key principles okay what are they learning is understood developmentally first key principle is learning is understood development step by step it will go forward okay the classroom offers a safe base that will happen when we are when we nurture them okay with the schools own way of nurturing okay now these are some of the examples you have your own way of nurturing the children but the basics are this the importance of of the nurture for the development of well being why we nurture them for their well being and you have to develop them language is a vital means of communication we have to talk to them with the different languages that all behavior in is communication whatever behavior will be done 
it will be in communication, the importance of transition in the lives of children and young people. So all this, the six sigma, what you call it, the six parts, which was made by Marjorie Maxwell's intervention, okay, how we can nurture them. A nurturing approach can be applied at both the universal and targeted level and promotes inclusive, respectful relationships. Inclusive means when you take all the children together and we have to respect them and the relationship will go for the whole school community, the learners, the staff, the parents, the carers, everybody should go there. And this is also applied in the schools of Scotland. And each year in your school also, you have the same. Thank you, Chandrani, madam. So these are the six nurture principles. If you want, you can take a screenshot of this also. Or I will send I will send this to madam and then she will again send it to the schools. Thank you, Saurav, sir. Nurturing approaches. What a, a nurturing approach recognizes that positive relationships are central to both learning and well-being. Okay. So nurturing approach, it recognizes positive relationships. Okay. A key aspect of nurturing approach is an understanding of attachment. Theory and how early experience and can have significant impact on development. So a key aspect of nurturing approach is understanding the feeling of that attachment. And how that experience in our day-to-day -day life. Okay. It recognizes that all schools setting staff have a role to play in establishing a positive relationship. Okay. And it, and it, we require to promote healthy and social emotional development. See, if relationships are recognized properly and implemented and practiced properly, then there will be predictable and consistent result time and again. And it will be quick for the children to grasp those things. Okay. A nurturing approach has a key. So nurturing, that's why we talk so much about nurturing, nurturing, nurturing. A nurturing approach has a key focus on the school environment and emphasis the balances between the care and challenges, which incorporates attainment, warmth, connection alongside human nature. You know, human nature is connected. The more we remove ourselves from people, today's world has become this type of world where people don't talk with each other. People don't come in front of each other. Nowadays, you attend a marriage party or say, in a, yeah, I remember in, when I was in school, college and many like you also, we used to enjoy the uh, parties, we used to enjoy the marriage ceremonies where all our uncles, aunties, everybody used to come and uh, joking and this and that and what not. And nowadays, no, these things doesn't even happen. People don't recognize you. People don't talk to you. People don't come in front of you. And people feel more... Uh, more sophisticated and intellectual when, when they say, I don't talk with them. I don't have time to for them. Why should I listen to them? Now, these are the things that are actually destroying the very social framework. You know, the fabric of the social society is going away from each other. It's eroding like anything. So that's why human for human development, relationships, nurturing approaches are very, very important. Just a minute. Now, next we'll go to resilience. What is resilience? Resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversity. Talked about it. Bounce back from adversity. Whatever, whatever, whatever has happened, let us come back from there. Okay. So that is the resilience is not a personality trait. It's not a, that uh, it's a quality personality trait or something. It is something. It's a characteristic that play a part. But resilience is something that can be promoted and developed through the provision of support and opportunities of growth. Yes, if we teachers, if we seniors, if we elders, with our, because we are primarily focusing on our children. So if we help them out by doing nurturing, uh, developing relationships, then they will bounce back from their adversity. And it has been proved time and again that it happens. It does happen. Old school resilience-based approaches are more likely to have long-term positive benefits than individual interventions, yes. If we just individually take one one, that will, so all the teachers, all the students together should join hands together, okay, to remove the adversity and resilience is bound to take place. The resilience framework summarizes a set of ideas and practices that promotes resiliency. There are you know, some scientifically approached, some psychological processes are there. The framework is split into five headings or sections, basics, belonging, learning, coping, and core self. So basics, what are the things? Belonging, how to 
belong to each other and we have to learn them and have to cope up with the adversities okay with each section there is a range of evidence based ideas that can be used in supporting resiliency so there are five framework the framework is made up into five headings and if we practice them it takes time it is not so easy to do it but time to time it will help the children to bounce back the resiliency wheel is another approach which identifies six major approaches of promoting resilience along with specific strategies so it's it's again like a wheel and it will move forward once we apply it the resilience framework is over here. You can see the specific approaches, the resiliency framework that was made in 2007 in order to bring back the children back from where, what they were facing. So good enough housing basics are, what are the basics? The good enough housing is needed, enough money to live properly, being safe, access and transport, healthy diet. These are the basics that we need for life, okay? So if we are in an advice, if we are in a bad position, if we get all these things, we will bounce back. Resilience will take place. Enough sleep is needed, play and lesson, being free from prejudice and discriminations. Belonging, find someone, some, somewhere for a child or a young person to belong. That fill of, feeling of belongingness should be there. Okay, tap into good influences. I'm not reading all, okay, because of there is lack of time. Focus on good times and places, some of the things. Okay, learning, make school, college, life work as 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 much as possible, engage mentors for the children and the young people, map out career for them. Uh, these are the learning processes that will help in developing the resilience part. Develop life skills, highlight achievements, what they have done and what others have done. And if there are problems, how to cope up, understanding the boundaries of keeping within them, being brave, solving problems, putting on rose tinted glasses. <laughs> Remember, tomorrow is another day. Yes, often we tell children if they may, if they are not successful on a particular day, we say, okay, don't worry, child. Remember, there's another second chance. There's tomorrow. Tomorrow is another day. Learn others when necessary and have enough. And instill a core self within the child. What we have to do? What are those resiliency framework? But instill a sense of hope. Never ever tell a child you can't do this or you don't have to do it. Yes, you can do it. Try again. Support the child and the young people to understand other people's feeling. What you call as empathy. Help the child and the young people to take responsibility for their own selves. Let them take their own responsibility. Foster their talents. Let their talents grow. There are tried and tested treatments for specific problems, and we have to go for them. We, you know, in very quickly, I have told this is a this is a very it, it's not it is not uh, so simple the way I have It's a bit complex work. It needs to be done. If you want, you can take a screenshot of this. But if we apply these techniques, we are able to create that resiliency among children and they will bounce back from their adversities. This is the resiliency will, which I was talking about. Okay, it will continuously go on and on and on. Okay, provide opportunities, increase uh, pro-social uh, pro bonding. Pro-social bonding means total social bonding. Uh, set clear and consistent boundaries for them, teach life skills to them, provide caring and support, set communicate, uh, communicate high expectations, tell the children about their high expectations, tell the children what are the good things to do. Don't just limit them to certain things. And the wheel will move on and on and life will be much more beautiful. School learning will be much, much better. Mindfulness, mindfulness is what? It is a quality of, in the beginning I told you, fully engaged in the oneself. Quality of being present and fully engaged in whatever we are doing at that moment. That's why I said, no, their development will take place. Free from destruction or judgment and aware of thoughts and feelings. That is mindfulness. Yes, you can do it. In try. Don't go for any judgment with the children. Let them make mistakes. It helps children and young people to regulate their emotions and focus their attention as well as developing their resilience. Furthermore, it can open channel of discussion with adults on discussing the thoughts worries and concerns told you mindfulness is what developing the brain and the development of the thinking will take place if we make their their thinking free from distraction if we make their thinking free from free from judgment nowadays judgmental is one of the worst enemies for the children don't be judgmental let them think freely let them even if they say something which seems to you like some, some some sort of a stupidity. No, no, no. Don't discriminate. It. Okay. That's what we need to do to make learning perfect after this. Emotion coaching. 
motion coaching is an evidence based strategy based upon the work of john gottman gottman john gottman another psychologist doing a lot of studies for education so emotional coaching uses moments of heightened emotion you know winning a game scoring high marks doing something positive in the class saving somebody and resulting behavior to guide and teach the children and the young people about effective response so those moments, the heightened moment, the emotion, the emotionally heightened moments we will use and we will see what result they get out. That is emotional coaching. To empathetic engagement. You all know what is empathy and sympathy by now. The child's emotion state is being verbally acknowledged. Okay, we have done this. You can see this beautiful, beautiful illustration over there. Brains are wired, thoughts of hands and interaction with the physical world. Yes. Thank you, Tanvir, sir. Thank you so much. These activities changes the child's neurological system. You know, when we talk about heightened emotion, when you talk about their good qualities, when you talk about resilience, when you show them the way for resilience, then their neurological system, the scientifically neurological system will develop. The child will calm down psychologically and physiologically. All those anxieties and anger and all will slowly, slowly cool down happens human beings are like just imagine the, suddenly if we get angry if two people come and console us how quickly we change our ideas how quickly we change our thinking that's what life is all about. emotion coaching involves what teaching children about the word emotion in the moment giving children strategies to deal with ups and downs you have to tell them okay better this thing may happen don't worry again tomorrow you will do it accepting all emotions as normal you have to tell them okay Chalta hai, jivan mein sab kuch chalta hai, hota hai beta, hota hai maa, koi chinta ki baat nahi, ek ho jayega, you will again be perfect tomorrow, don't worry son, building trusting and respectful relationship, that is the most important. Building a trusting, I always say one thing that is always the teacher student trust should always be there. That will always create a very good and respectful relationship. Yes, that's very important. Thank you. And psychosocial care, what are those we are talking about? Research has identified five key principles that support recovery following a disaster or a serious incident. So after any disaster or after any serious incident, certain things happen. And that was done by Hopfall Hop at all. Means Upfall and his uh, friend uh, and his colleagues did this in 2007. These principles will be important to consider when supporting members of staff, children, and young people upon their returning to school. When they will return to school, these are the things. What the five principles are: a sense of safety. Again, the same thing. It is important. Everybody is talking about safety, safety, safety. Children and young people should feel that they are safe on returning to school. A sense of calm. Children and young people are likely to experience a range of emotions, including both pleasant and unpleasant emotions. You know. So it is important that these these are normalized to give them support and manage them when they return back. A sense of self and collective efficacy. Children need to feel that they have control over what is happening and they can they can take care of everything. Social connectedness. It is important that adults, children, and people, young people feel that they belong to have social network and they can support them within the educational setting. So a good network has to be developed, promoting hope. Yes. Always, always promote hope. If we want to have a beautiful life, hope is the only word that will take us. Yes, tomorrow will be good. Today it happened. Okay, chalo, kal theek ho jayega. Right. So these are the psychosocial care that we need: sense of safety, uh, safety, sense of calmness, sense of self, and collective efficacy, social correctedness, and promoting hope. Promote hope as much as. The PACE model that I was talking about, PACE can be used by any adult to validate, explore and understand child's feeling. What is this PACE model? P-A-C-E, PACE, generally PACE means what? The time gap between two bits of art or something like that. Playfulness, let them be playfulness. Accept them. Let the curiosity develop and have a feeling of empathy. Feel by entering into the child's mind and what is going on into that. So if we apply this, playfulness should be there, acceptance should be there, curiosity should be there among children and we should show empathy. All these are done.
life will become wonderful school teaching will become much much better than what we used to be or what we were finding right now because of the pandemic so an open ready calm and relaxed engaged attitude that is playfulness accept and unconditionally accepting the child make them feel safe secure what i said just now okay curiosity without judgment children become aware of their inner self and empathy a sense of compassion for the child and with their feelings so this is what we need and growth mindset refers to the belief that abilities and knowledge are not fixed and that with the effort experience and support we can achieve the growth okay research has shown that when children have growth mindset they are more willing to take care of challenging tasks focus on that so that we have to develop for them the growth mindset will be important and useful for staff to foster when children return to school a lot of things are there very simple way just help them and uh, to be positive just help them to think think in the right way growth mindset will take place this was done by direct direct c direct and this is the venn diagram one side is growth mindset another side is fixed mind some people have a fixed mindset we uh, i will first go to the fixed mindset part the uh, inability to realize the change talents and intelligence are fixed at birth they say attitude it's very static over there believes there's no one for imp improvement stuck in the ways this is the fixed mindset acha nahi hoga jo hai wahi ho jayega aur kuch nahi and <coughs> growth mindset which you will create the teacher will create for the child talents and intelligence can be developed with time with effort attitude is evolving time it is not static it is evolving changing thrive on challenges more take challenges thrive on them become successful willing to try on new things not just stuck to the old things and stay over there embrace failure as a mechanism for learning and development and in between these two if we the central part believe in intelligence creativity and talent and both have these things so the common thing among fixed mindset people and people with growth mindset is belief in intelligence creativity and talent this is there now it is our duty to ignite all this and the final thought what's that let's see what all these psychological theories have in common is the importance of positive relationship again and again i am putting lot of emphasis on that please have a positive relationship with the children and the young people and with adults in school the school should be a really a temple where good relationships will be given taking time at the beginning or either start or if it is there it's good if it is not there re establish relationship not only with adults but with each other with will help children and young people to feel safe secure and connected which in turn will promote a whole school approach in enabling all of them to be ready to learn and this is yes thank you fleming ma'am by seeing your name suddenly i remembered i am fleming thank you fleming ma'am so develop good relationship rest of the things will automatically happen in the classroom so now our work has just started what we need to do is the two semi lost years i will not call them completely lost they were semi lost years okay uh, we will again regain them no? as the poet said the paradise lost and paradise regained there is a very famous english poem called poet it's an epic i will say paradise lost see the good and the bad both are there with us and both dominate in our both are there in our heart but it is the bad which is more predominant on the good and what we need is to remove that bad as much as possible and the lost years will be regained so all we need is patience we need will power and complete association with children again and again good 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 relationship we need do it class will be one thank you so here is my email id i have given uh, to me this is a, also a very very touchy issue in the beginning i told you so if you if you add, if you want to add something if you want to give some suggestion please do write to me and definitely i'll add them in this program so that next time we will have it again we can have more a refined one all of you are allowed to call me till 8:30 pm this number of mine and i'm always there because the process of learning should continue so let us learn let us grow and let us make our children learn and grow thank you if anybody has any question they can ask before we call it yes, sir for your 
wonderful session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. If anybody has any question, they can ask. Uh, if you have. Or else we will call it a day. But I, one thing I will tell you, respected teachers, this is a very touchy issue. With the children, so please, please, please have a very good relationship. Take them very seriously. Don't scold them. Don't go for any judgment. Just let them grow and develop. At least it will, as two years have gone, at least it will take another two years for to regain the children back in that same position. That, that's what we all are finding. It. Okay. Thank you, Neelam Madam, Sweta Kumari Madam. Thank you very much. Archana Madam, thank you. Tanvir sir, thank you very much. Uh, somebody is asking, yes, uh, uh, how there's a question. Let, let me see what is that question. Oh, God, we have 16, 22 participants. Wonderful. Uh, by the way, one more thing I want to tell all of you. Uh, CBSC has started offline capacity building programs in January in places like Jamsedpur, Rachi, Dhanbad in my school. We all are having a very uh, an excellent training program about children's health and wellness in school. It's a NCRT, CBSC, UNESCO, Government of India sponsored program. It will be a two day capacity building program in various centers. So those of you who are interested, please take this if, uh, take this program, join the training program, just not to fill your uh, training target, but to learn something different. Because we will be applying all those techniques that we will learn during those, tra that those training programs in our schools in the coming days. So please take it and remember it's a paid program. The registration processes are still going on. Uh, Subhashri Madam will be one of the resource person. I am one of the resource person. Uh, our uh, Moshumi Das Madam, principal of Jamsatpur, she is also one of the resource persons. So please uh, take this uh, training program. It's very, very important. Okay, so if you get time, please please do register yourself fast because the registration process is going on and only 60 seats in, at each venue will be available. So please go for that. Yes, Michael, sir, thank you so much. Thank you, Nilam Madam. Thank you. Somebody was asking, writing a question. Uh, I couldn't get it because the, these messages are moving very fast. Let me see. Thank you, Priya Savio, madam. Okay, I think we still have two minutes. Yes, uh, I will send this. I will send it to uh, Subhashri Madam, this entire EPTEX, and you all can see it and go through it. Just now, after this program, only I will send it. Thank you, Khan sir. Thank you so much. Yanka Madam, thank you very much. Thanks, Nilesh sir. Uh, Guria, madam, I remember you. Yes, last time also you were present. Tanvir Alam, sir. Yes, you are always there. I, I, I remember you. Pramod Kumar, sir. Thank you, sir. Ravi Khan, sir. Thank you so much. Babita, madam. Thank you. Saket Kumar, sir. Thank you. Gautam, sir. Thank you. Somali, madam. Thank you. Olivia Fleming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Avijit Das, sir. Okay, ma'am, uh, shall I now remove myself from the platform, ma'am? Uh, it's over, ma'am. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much.